last flint napping video, I showed you how to choose napping material and hammer stones. In this one, I'll teach you the six basic principles of flint napping, plus six tips I've learned over 10 years of napping. With these fundamentals, you should be able to make a hand axe or a chopper using nothing but two rocks, making you about as good as Homo erectus. Tip one, safety. Protect your eyes, hands, feet, and lungs. I wear safety glasses. You do not want a flake in your eye. And then garden gloves allow me a lot of movement and flexibility. Leather gloves work, but they're less dexterous. And shoes and jeans. It's best if your shoes go up to your jeans because I'll often cut myself through my socks with a flake I've driven off. For my lungs, I just nap outside, especially if there's a breeze. But if you do a lot of napping indoors, you may want to use a breathing mask. I use a thick leather pad on my left thigh to use as a napping surface. And a thick leather pad to put in your hand for smaller work is helpful. The basic goal of napping is to maximize thinning while minimizing shortening and finish with an even symmetrical edge because what is a knife but something that's long and thin with an even symmetrical edge. Now here are the principles. First definition, the point which you strike is called the platform. The platform should be below the equator or midline of the rock. So this is a good platform. If I were to flip it over, this same spot won't be good because this flake will shorten it more than it thins it. The flake's only going to go to about there. If I strike it on this side, the flake's going to travel all the way down this way and only shorten it by so much. Let me show you. So as you can see, the flake traveled all the way down this way, but didn't shorten it very much. I'll show you on the other side. If I were to do it above midline, say right here, that flake traveled downward and didn't thin it very much, but shortened it by that much. This rock will serve as a good example. So your first strike I call breaking into the rock. You're looking for an area below the midline, and this is an obvious choice here. The hammer stone should be about the same mass as the stone you're striking. It's a nice thinning flake. This flake broke in two here, but a good flake. We call this the bulb of per percussion, and that's that conchoidal fracturing. And here's my second tip. Reconstruct your flakes. So try to find the ones that you strike off, and then put them back on the rock, and you'll start to get a better idea of how flaking works. A flake like this actually can be used for cutting stuff, a kind of disposable knife, or you can make an arrowhead out of it. And with this flake, you can also see principle number two. Flakes follow ridges or high spots. So it's subtle in this example, but there's kind of a high spot here. So I wanted to travel this way. And here's a ridge this way, so I wanted to travel this way. I kind of had two conflicting directions there, which is probably why it split down the middle. A good flake. An extension of that principle is that flakes stop at plateaus. So if I were to strike it here, it's most likely going to abruptly end right there. I'll show you. You can see it's abruptly stopped at that plateau. So you want to try to remove plateaus like this as soon as possible. Returning to this, we'll see principle three, alternate sides. So a flake removed on side one sets up the platform for side two. So I'm going to strike it now on this side, and it's likely going to follow this ridge. So I'll set up a good platform right there, leading me to tip three, which is think backwards. I could even say from the beginning, if I want to remove that, to hit this first to set up a platform right there. So let's see that. Pretty nice, but not a very clean flake. And the reason for that is that there was a sharp edge, which leads me to principle four. Your platform should be strong enough to fully transmit the blow into a flake. So a sharp edge like that works as like a crumple zone in a car where it spreads out the force and doesn't all lead to a clean flaking. So how do I avoid that? Well, what I do is grind it down. If all you have is a hammer stone, you can just use the hammer stone as a grinder. But that doesn't work as well as something actually abrasive, like this piece of pumice. I picked this up from some landscaping. Pumice is a common landscaping rock. Or you could use like a, a ceramic braiding wheel from an angle grinder. So you just grind it real good right, to go from both sides. And so now I have a pretty good platform right here. We're alternating sides now. Hopefully it'll follow this ridge. Before I do, I can prepare a better platform. Specifically, I can lower it this way because right now it's kind of on the equator and I want it below to get a good clean flake. So the way I do that is break off a flake first this way. Remember, think backwards, travel along this little ridge and set us up a nice platform to get more of this. So let's do that. So I've got a pretty nice flake there. Let's grind it down. Now my platform is definitely below the equator, so I'll strike it here and flake it off that way. And I messed up with the flake there. Which leads me to tip four. You want to brace and follow through for a sure, consistent strike. It's easy to anticipate the blow and move away. You want to have a nice, full strike. So that's set me up for a platform here to break off that way. First, let's grind it down on this platform. 
Just probably strike in right there. You can set it like this in your leg to have a more stable platform, but I don't like to have it fully pressed on like that because that can inhibit fracturing. There we go, there's a nice large clean flake. Grind the surface to repair. Well, just got a little small one off there. Now I can keep going on this, but let me first go through some other principles on the more difficult rock here. Principle five, platforms should be acute angles, not obtuse like here. If I were to try to strike this off, probably bounce off. I might get something off, but in general, rounded means it's gonna be rebounded. For the last principle six, your strike angle affects flake length. So if I were to strike perpendicular like that, just straight on, Got a pretty short flake there. But if I were to do slightly more like this, I'm gonna get a longer flake. Back to this one, doing the same thing. Alternating sides, getting below the midline. And then we kind of get into a tough spot like this. I always just start on the other side first and work around to that or prepare it better. But it's definitely a lot to do over here. Oops, I hit it too hard and I got a crack down the middle. But heck, <laughs> this will kind of work as a chopper. And as you can see, it happens in an area where it's thinner. I actually strike it on this side, but that can happen. Not the greatest final product, but using just a hammer stone is limiting. So tip five is you need to break the rules sometimes. They're not all hard and fast. Sometimes you do want to strike above the midline, depending on what your goal is. And napping is all about compromise, puzzle solving, and technique. And it's cognitive and physical skills can take years to master. And my last tip is get tons of material and don't be afraid to ruin it for practice. Is find what's available in your area, you know, maybe jasper, basalt, uh, obsidian if you got it, flint. If you don't have any natural materials, just use some glass. You can use porcelain or johnstone. That's what we call a toilet porcelain. But you're going to end up ruining a lot of material, so don't try to salvage everything into something, a workable piece if you really want to learn it. You can also buy an applicable rock from many places. And to get thinner and finer blades, such as arrowheads and knives, one needs to use a billet. I use either antler or copper and pressure flaking tools. Again, antler, tips, or copper. I'll cover the use of these in following videos.